G'day. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that your, your phone is no longer getting service in Australia, either with Telstra or Optus. The 3G network closed today on the 28th of October, and from there, it seems to also have affected a lot of other 4G and potentially 5G phones. What I've noticed with it is they seem to be blocking or IMEI blocking those particular phones from even connecting to the network. Initially, it was you require to have a 4G phone when the 3G network shuts to you require a phone that it needs VOLTE, which is essentially using mobile data to do voice calls, except on certain models without the correct settings, these phones would drop down to 3G to make that voice call. There are certain advantages to VOLTE, which is typically a quicker connection speed of the call and also a higher a higher audio quality for both people on that call. That's great. Also, that means that mobile net mobile data is now re or voice calls are prioritized over mobile data rather than competing against it. Anyway, enough about the pros regarding VOLTE or Volti, depending where how you want to call it. What does this mean for your phone? So your phone that's currently now blacklisted, there is very little you can do apart from replace said phone. I don't necessarily agree with why this has become the outcome. Initially it was get a 4G phone, get a VO LTE phone. Your 4G phone may not make phone calls after this date. Now to your phone is blacklisted from the Australian communication network or the mobile network, which is absolutely ludicrous. I find that to be fairly obscene. There's probably plenty of devices out there that only require 4G internet to function. There may not necessarily be a phone that do have an IMEI number that does not support 3G or VOLTE. And now those devices are potentially blacklisted as well. What happens if you have an older phone that was perfectly fine, did not support VOLTE, still talk, communicated perfectly fine to your 4G network in your area and you use that as a mobile hotspot. These devices are essentially small little com pocket computers. They're not necessarily only phones. There's plenty of people that have been perfectly happy having a phone that would be able to be connected up as a modem and just live in a drawer, live in a cupboard, plug it into power, leave it, use mobile data off that. They could essentially see that as that's what kind of device it is. I do understand the opposite angle of that does potentially open up risks to potentially triple zero phone calls, being these mobile computers are in pockets and they are connected to a network, but they can't dial triple zero. But I do believe as grown adults, there is the said risk of utilizing such devices. And I see it almost as legislation regarding alcohol, drugs, motor vehicles, where there's certain requirements that have to happen. And if you don't fit those requirements, you're eliminated. So right now, mo these particular phones, it could be as new as last year. This, there most definitely be still be phones getting budget phones, brand new, sitting on a shelf, getting sold, that do not support VOLTE. I can almost guarantee that. I'm willing to pretty much bet money on that one. I had customers come in earlier this year and they bought a Nokia C31, I believe it was. And that particular phone did not support VOLTE on Telstra. Um, or at least from memory, that's how it went. Don't exactly quote me on that one. But the phone he purchased off the shelf from Harvey Norman at least six months prior, or three months prior, and now his phone is not eligible to even connect to the network, which is absolutely crazy. These phones that are now probably sitting on shelves, brand new, are completely disposable. That Well, in a way, you can connect it to Wi-Fi, if you wanted to use it as a small portable tablet for the kids, that opportunity is now gone. From an e-waste side of things, this is a complete, complete wreck. It's not great at all. There's gonna be so many devices out there that are now utterly useless. Granted, they could potentially have been useless years ago, but now the hard line is drawn in the sand. These are not useful at all. The other thing is, my mother-in-law had a Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Plus, I believe the model was. I purchased, I purchased it a couple of years back. Runs Android 12 on there. 
or at least memory served. It's got Android 12. It has a Snapdragon 732, yeah, 732G, and it does support 4G, does not have VO LTE. That phone is now blacklisted. There's going to be quite a lot of Xiaomi, Nokia, Oppo, pretty much Huawei, a lot of phones, a lot of Chinese phones, and they're going to get knocked out. And there's going to be plenty of phones getting purchased from Telstra, Optus, prepaid phones, wherever it may be. I do have a very cynical view regarding this where I can see these potentially getting used to drum up sales. Granted, I do believe they say that this is to the letter of the law. I've yet to read the lit litigation regarding that myself, but I do find it very, very shady and very gray, even from the initial announcement of the, of the 3G shutdown, which is funnily enough affecting so many 4G and potentially 5G phones. There's also quite a few Sony phones I've seen too that also don't enable it to connect up. It's crazy. This, I'm curious how large this blacklisting of phones is. To bring it back around, if basically if you're affected by this blacklisting of your phone regarding the mobile networks, switching to a different phone provider will not help. The only way forward is purchasing a new phone, which funnily enough, the most supported phones out there do seem to be Apple and Samsung, which is the largest selling models of phones in Australia. I find that a bit, bit weird how the target market of these phones that are also the most expensive phones are the ones that work the best where you could have one year old phones from overseas that are now ceasing to operate anyway that's a bit of my rambling thoughts regarding the 28th of october mobile shutdown bye